Hi, I'm Lance. We're going to talk to you about safety and testing instruments today when we're uh, going to be measuring flow on the DAC unit. Um, probably some uh, safety things is you want to probably make sure you're wearing the proper uh, PPE, personal protective equipment. Uh, right now i got some gloves on, uh, some glasses. Normally you wear side shields, uh, hearing protection as well. Um, also, when you get into like some of the equipment, you want to make sure, like for instance, when you wire the stuff up, you want to make sure it's all wired. That way it doesn't blow out a meter or something when you take measurements with it. Uh, some of the test equipment that we're going to be um, going over today, I'm just going to do like a little uh, quick overview of it. They'll get into some of them more specifically. Um, this is a Honeywell ST1000 smart pressure transmitter. This is a three valve manifold. The purpose of this is to get equalized pressure uh, through the manifold to take the uh, process measurement. These are impulse lines. These are going to be, this one's going to be coming from the high side into the high side of the manifold. This one's coming from the low side into the low side. Um, basically these are what are supplying the process to the manifold. This is an orifice plate. This is kind of the restriction um, that causes flow. Flow is proportional to the square root of the differential pressure of a restriction. Um, right here, this is going to be your high side of the uh, orifice plate since the water is going to be coming towards it. You've got, you're going to have a higher pressure buildup on this side of the orifice plate, and then when it goes through the orifice plate, it has a lesser pressure that's going to be coming out this side. Another uh, instrument that we're going to be uh, talking about later on, it's a hard um, 475 uh, communicator. Um, this thing is pretty much the uh, pretty much a big brain that you can use with all this. You can pretty much do calibrations. It can tell you your process, um, upper range value, lower range value. You can get temperature readings and all that. And so they'll get into more than that uh, later in the video. I'm Colton, and this is our power supply, our controller, and our transmitter. We're going to hook all this up in a series circuit. It's very important that you hook it up properly so you can uh, blow fuses and cause a lot of problems. So we're going to go from the positive of the power supply to the positive of the controller here. We're going to go from the negative of the controller to the positive of the transmitter on the other side of the junction box. And then we're going to hook up the the negative of the power supply. Coming around on the other side of the junction box, we want to hook up the positive to number one, the negative to number two, and we want to run both of these to the transmitter, positive and negative sides, which is down here. Next we want to hook up our part communicator into the positive and negative terminals. After that, we can come around here and power supply. So the next step is that we need to line up the valves so that our water can flow in a complete loop through this orifice plate. First thing we want to do is open valve V10 right here, coming out of the pump one discharge, and lets the water flow through the orifice plate. Now this is a, um, a fail open control valve, and we are going to let the water pass through the fail open control valve, so we need to shut off the box that goes around the, the valve. Uh, we need to open the valve V9 that goes to the rotometers. We want to close valve V2 in between the rotometers. We also want to close uh, the valve that goes to the chill water because we don't need that. And this will allow our water to flow all the way to valve V5, which needs to be open to release the water into tank 3. So when we turn on pump 1, we have a complete loop coming through the rotometer and leaving tank 3. And we can clear air out of the lines by pressuring up and releasing water flow. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ryan. I'm going to show you guys how to do the calibration table for our flow measurement. Alright, we're going to start out with our given percent, 0 to 100 percent. From there, we'll find our decimal linear percentage, which will be 0 at the 0 point 0.5 
0.25 and 0.75. From there, you can find your milliamps DC and also find your nonlinear decimal percentage. Your milliamps DC are going to be in inter intervals of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20, given the percentage. Your gallons per minute and your inches of water are going to be found in the field on the unit, which we'll do in a second. Right now I'm going to find the nonlinear percentage, which is found by taking your linear percentage and taking the square root of it. which will give us, for 75%, we're going to get 0.866. To speed up this process, I'm going to just write all the numbers in. All right, right now I'm going to put on my PPE and go out to the unit to take the measurements for the max gallons per minute and the inches of water on the communicator. All right, we are out in the unit and what we're gonna be looking at is the maximum inches of water which is given to us by the communicator. Right now it's the uh, PV and it's reading about 220 inches of water. So we're gonna write that down in our high. And then we're gonna take our max gallons per minute. We're gonna come over here to the rotometer while the valve's wide open and we're reading 11 gallons per minute so we're going to write that down. I'm going to speed up the process by just filling in the, the answers for you and then we'll show you what it looks like. Alright, we got our gallons per minute here. How we found this was your 11 gallons per minute is your max. When it's at 25 percent, the nonlinear percentage of flow is 50%. So you multiply the 11 by the 50%, that'll give you 5.5. You take the nonlinear percentage and do it by each point, and that'll give you each answer to the flow in gallons per minute for the percentage. Over here in your inches of water, it's a linear scale, so your 50% is just going to be half of your maximum. Your 25% is just going to be 25% of your maximum. All right, now I'm gonna give it over to Lance to show you guys how to use the controller. All right, I'm gonna take the readings that Ryan uh, copied down in his chart and I'm gonna put them into the Yokogawa controller we have here. Basically what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go in here to uh, set this controller up. And I'm gonna to go to configure two. And this is gonna be where your reading right here. Up here where it says inhibit, you need to kind of you need to change that to enable because inhibit it's kind of where it's kind of locked out right now so you come in here then you want to switch that to enable and basically the only um, variables in here that we're worried about is work um, this SCH1 and SCHL1 and we're gonna come down here to where that says uh, the 150 and we're gonna put that um, what our reading was for the uh, high of our flow we're going to change that to 11. And this controller it takes a little bit for it to kind of kick in, so sometimes you got to hold the buttons down a little bit more. Then we'll also change that to 11. Then we'll come back here and we'll take that zero out. Go the other way so it won't take as long to go back around. So it's got that changed to 11. So now we're going to come down here to the lower side. And we're going to set that to zero. But sitting pretty much since that's zero, we're just going to leave that alone. There's nothing need to do. So now we're going to go back to the change this back to enable up here at the top or change it back from enable to inhibit 
And so we're going to come down here and hit that button and push that back in enable. Actually, that button. And now we're going to come back to the uh, home screen where you got your uh, levels on there. And we're going to have Ryan kind of do the valve that kind of shows it going uh, lowering. And you can see as he's lowering the valve, it actually shows the reading right here going up and down. And so right now it looks like it's at all the way closed right now. And now it's coming back up. And then it went back down. And it looks like he should be around, looks like he's getting back up to uh, full uh, capacity on the rotometer. And that's kind of how the Yokogawa controller is going to work. Alright, I'm Ryan, this is Lance, that's Colton, and this is our camera girl, Ariel. So we are in Richard Tunstall's uh, 1456 instrument calibration class, uh, spring 2015. And this is how you calculate the differential pressure across the orifice plate to measure flow.